Hi everyone, welcome back. All right, I have got an Arteza art haul and review for you. The company reached out to me a while back and asked me if I would like to review some of their products if they sent them to me. So they very generously sent me three different things to review. Um, and I will have everything linked down below. So if you are interested, you can click on the affiliate link. I do get a small commission for it. And if you're interested, I will also have a 10% off your purchase coupon code. So be sure to check that out. Um, if you click the little arrow and it expands that description box. But I wanted to do this review because Lately, I have just been kind of in this creative rut. And when I mean in a creative rut, I mean I have had very little time to journal. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know. And I have kind of lost motivation because I wasn't finding what was working in the very little time that I had. And I've been just kind of looking for some new supplies to revamp uh, my journaling and my planning to kind of just, I don't know, spark some interest in everything all over again. And so this kind of came at a good time. And then I also thought this would benefit you guys too in terms of it's getting to be back to school. So if you're looking to shop for yourself, if you're going to class, if you're shopping for your student, um, or if you're just looking for some supplies revamp like me, um, I'm just going to go through the supplies and talk about how I would personally use them. So it might not end up being as thorough of a review, but I'm just going to talk about how I would use the supplies personally and how it applies to myself. So that's what it's going to be about. To give you an overview of what they sent me, they sent me three different things. They sent me the Arteza smear proof retractable pens and you get that in a set of 20 so 19 colors and then one in a fine point in black these are the twine markers they are water-based so you can use these for water coloring and they are dual tipped as well as the Inconic pens these are also water-based um, and you get 48 of them. Okay, um, I am going to, hopefully, oh my gosh, I'm running, I'm running out of room already. Um, review for you the gel pens first. And how I did this was I swatched it in four different types of notebooks, the four that I see myself using in the near future, if not right now. Um, I swatched it in my Hobonichi Weeks, which is my everyday planner. I swatched it in my Traveler's Notebook in the 013 insert, which has a different type of Tomoe River paper, um, in my opinion, to the Hobonichi. So that's my everyday journal. I swatched it in a basic sketchbook, so just regular paper, not mixed media sketchbook paper. And then I also swatched it in my Leuchtturm bullet journal because I do plan on going back to this. And so I wanted to see how it reacted to this type of paper. Like I said, you get 20 of them, 19 colors and a 0.7 millimeter medium point, and then one fine point in 0.5 in black. That's what it looks like coming out of the box. Um, I'm getting over a cold, so um, do forgive me. Those are all the colors that you get. And with this set of 20, it's $16.39. So I think price-wise and color range-wise, this is very comparable to, um, to, you know, pretty popular and standard brands. The Paper Mate Inkjoy gel pens as well as the Uniball Signo 207s, both of which I use. I use the Uniball Signos for planning at work, and then I use the Uniball Papermate, or not Uniball, the Papermate Inkjoy pens um, 
or if I just want a gel pen at um, home. Excuse me, I just had to take a swig of water there. So these are the colors that you get. Um, it's kind of fun that they added one neon color and just something to point out, it doesn't bother me, but you can see that it's flat up against this piece of plastic and then up against my desk. You can see the branding on the singular pen, whereas if I just pick this up, the branding is right off of the clip. So if I clipped it down and it sat flat up against that plastic, you see the branding disappear. That's probably a manufacturing thing, and I'm going to point out that the branding is not off on any of the other products, but just something that I noticed. Um, so there is that kind of inconsistency. And then one more thing is while I was swatching, there is no branding at all on this purple one. So kind of off, <laughs> but like I said, it doesn't really bother me, but it's just something that I noticed and I just wanted to point out. They wrote right away when I took them out of the packaging. And I am going to show you, once I find the page, what it looks like in the Hobonichi paper, which if, for those of you who do use Hobonichi, the paper does have kind of like a smoother surface, so it does take ink very well and I expected no less in that kind of quality for a gel pen. Um, that's the color range that you get. The, I don't know, maybe it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. The purple and the blue seem to just be a bolder line weight. Maybe it's just the color and how it just looks on paper, but it looks bolder than just the 0.7. And then I compared it to the colors that I personally use for planning in both my work planner and my personal planning, just to kind of see what the color comparison looks like. This is the same red in the Uniball Signo, but for the most part, you're gonna see that it matches pretty well. Um, a little off in just the light blue, but um, I guess it just depends on what kind of colors you like, but it's pretty dang comparable. And then what I did like with the gel pen is you get two kind of variations of like a pink and a pink purple, which is really nice because those are the colors that I use for planning with my daughter. And so I'm going to give you a look here to what it looks like in the Leuchtturm. Leuchtturm, I think, takes ink very well too, so I really enjoyed writing in the Leuchtturm paper with these pens. It did take a little bit for the orange to start writing, and then it did, um, I think it skipped in one other um, notebook, I think it was in the sketchbook too, but for the most part, they just wrote really, really well right off the bat, right out of the box. You're going to get that shadowing, but I think that for the most part in a lot of papers, you're going to get that. I did notice that the orange is not as vibrant as the orange in the Uniball Signal. And I really like the orange in the Uniball Signal because I use that a lot for planning. And so you can see the comparison right there too. It's just, it comes off a little lighter. So I do wish that it does um, show up a little bit brighter. And then in the yellow too, you're not going to see very much of that color. And I personally don't know what I would use the yellow for. It did take a while for that color to show up too. It skipped a little. Um, I, I, I guess for art you could use it. The pink kind of skipped. But this is a grittier paper too, so I suppose with the gel, um, maybe it just took a little bit. That's what it looks like. The purple, see? The purple just looks like it's a heavier line weight. And then in the... Traveler's Notebook. That's what it looks like. 
I find it interesting that it includes a brown color. Not, I have not seen too many gel pen sets come with a brown. So very interesting. And I think for the price you get a great, great set with a great color variation. So that's the retractable gel pens. So there it is. Um, I'm just packaging is kind of falling apart. So um, I'm gonna set that there. And then next up, I wanted to talk about I think my favorite, which are the dual tipped markers. You get 48 of them and all of them have one side the 0.4 millimeter fine tip and then the brush tip on the other and these are all water-based so you can use them for water coloring and I did test that out because I was curious to see how it moved on different types of paper and so for that I did give that a go. Whereas I believe these are water-based too compared to the Tombos, but I've never used these for that purpose. So, um, and I imagine that these are supposed to be pretty comparable to the Tombos. So far in how I've tested the paper, it does seem to be very similar in how it takes to the paper, as well as the same kinds of effect that you would get from the line weights and the brush tip. So, for the set of 48, this goes for $33.89, which I think is a great, great price compared to the pricier Tombos. So if you were just getting into hand lettering or you wanted to try the Tombos but not necessarily invest in them, but you want a nice variety of color, this would be a great set to get because that way you're not investing all your money into something that you're not necessarily sure about. These are great, but they are pricey. And, um, you know, to buy them in a set, you do put a lot of money up front. So just to give you a comparison in just the size itself, the Artezas are your standard kind of marker pen size <clears throat> compared to the Tapos. The Tombos are harder to find pen cases that fit in. So far, I found um, the ones that are like these pen cases that are made out of this like plastic -y, almost recycled material. Um, these tend to fit them. But when I am out buying a pen case or like my superior laborer pen case uh, that I use a lot and that you see me post a lot about in the uh, in my Instagram account that doesn't fit these and so I am reluctant to carry these around and I tend to forego bringing them just because I'm worried about having to flip that top over and having this big gap and just things falling out these I feel like I could just carry a lot more um, and also to note that the barrel itself, these are a lot smaller and thinner compared to the Tombos. So something to keep in mind um, that you do get the added benefit of mobility with this being a standard size. Oh, I'm just taking some sips of water here. So um, to compare the tips, you do get a different line weight so the tombow is going to have a, a broader fine tip that's their fine tip and then you get the fine liner tip with the arteza and then oops same with the brush tip the arteza is going to be on the smaller scale compared to the tombow but they're both going to be able to do what you want if you want a hand letter, if you want to color. And so you get this really great 
color range. I love the brights. I love like the pinks. Just looks so great. But with such variety, you can do so much with it. Here's what they look like on the Loisterm. They did so nicely on that Loisterm paper. I'm a big fan of the Loisterm paper. And this was me making all the swatches first and then going in later with a brush pen to carry over the color. So this was minutes minutes have passed before I brought that color over and with the lighter shades you're not going to see too much carryover but you'll get a nice wash um I am not so skilled with brush markers and watercolors so I'm sure there's tips and you know tricks to using that like I said I was just out of curiosity I tried it out but I'm not personally going to use these for watercolor necessarily but in a pinch if I didn't want to carry more watercolors it gives you that kind of flexibility which is really nice the pinks are so nice in this range I I love these colors right here um, and I'm a big fan of the like purple pinks right here and what I did was I compared it to the Tombow's just a few colors and I found what I could the closest in the Arteza line. So here you it's pretty it's pretty dang similar. At least in these colors. Um, not so much necessarily on these colors. The purple's almost the same. Um, but the reds, um, the brown. I have the set of 48. I believe there is a larger set on that site. So it's something to keep in mind. But with the set that I have in the 48, um, you can still get something similar. And then what I did was I swatched it as well. I can find it in my Hobonichi. And the color carried over very well. But that's to be expected just because the the paper is a lot smoother. And I did the same thing. I swatched it all first and then I went in with my water brush to carry over the color. So you're definitely able to, to get a little bit more of a, a wash on the Hobonichi paper. So, and it was pretty much the same as my traveler's notebook if I can find it and once again the pinks just showed up so nicely so I'm just I'm a fan of those colors the Egyptian blue is also very pretty too and I did compare it to my favorite Tombow which is this one, and it's the 533. And the Arteza one, the Periwinkle Blue, does come out a little bit darker, but I am very happy that this set did include something that was similar because that is my favorite Tombow marker color. And so, once again, you just get a nice, nice wash on that smoother paper. Now it reacted differently to the sketchbook paper. Keep in mind, um, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, this is not mixed media paper. So I got a lot of bleed through and the streakiness, which is to be expected from a marker. But when I took the water over that color, it bled through onto the next page, as you can see. And so I did have to go in with a separate piece of paper to keep it from going through the next page. And it didn't carry over. You can see that there's barely any kind of color carryover. But you might get a different reaction on mixed media paper. So something to keep in mind and very much I bled through on the other side, so it's still fun to work with. Um, like I said, I prefer it on the Loistrum paper and the Tomoe River paper in both the Hobonichi and the Traveler's Notebook. So great, great 
um, quality for the price compared to Tomball's. And then lastly, trying to make room here, is the Inconic pens. And these are water-based in a 0.4 millimeter line. You um, can use these as watercolor, but I did not test it that way just because fine liners, I will not use them in a watercolor form. But just out of the packaging, it just looks so nice and sleek. You get the one tray of just, um, you know, brighter colors. And then you get more earthy tones on the second tray here. And these I would compare to the Stabilo uh, fine tip marker. These um, have the similar size. I think the Artezas come off just a little bit smaller. But packaging wise, I think I'm not a fan of the Stabilo with orange barrel. That's, you know, just their thing. Um, but I think the Artezas just have a sleeker packaging to it. So personally for me, I just like the aesthetics of the Arteza ones. They're ergonomically um, designed, so, you know, it's got the triangular barrel, which is really nice and easy on the hand. And it's got that kind of like silver foiling. Um, so, like I said, I just like the Arteza packaging for me. And... Um, you get, I believe, all the shades listed on the back of the packaging. And that goes for all of the boxes. Um, so I'm not going to show you the markers because I have that all on the box. Oh, here they are. Right here. So that is very handy that they have that guide built into the packaging. Um, but the only thing is, is the, the gel pens and these, the Inconics, don't actually have the color names printed on the packaging, whereas the markers do. So you'll see that all the names are actually on there, whereas the Inconic pens and the gel pens, um, I believe just have, no, these actually have the actual, like, number to reference but the gel pens don't they just have you know Arteza and then the uh, line weight so that's what they look like they look really pretty in the box I do have to say and I really really enjoyed using these in my moist term that's what they look like Lovely, lovely colors. I just really like the pinks and the purples. That's just kind of what I like to use a lot. But I do like that they have earth tones because these actually, I think, would look, uh, would be great to use in adult coloring books too. So with the fine tip, you can, um, you know, really get in that detailed work if you do very elaborate adult coloring books. And these would be a great alternative to the colored pencils because for me, I love using colored pencils, but I also like a very saturated color when I color. And after a while, that just hurts your hand when you're just constantly pressing down and you constantly have to sharpen. And you kind of, you get a color intensity, you know, with these without having to put all that pressure on your hand. So these would be great for coloring, but um, I would use these for planning. And that's how I do plan on using them. They showed up very nicely on the Hobonichi paper. You do the kit that shadowing, but that's to be expected. On the Leuchtturm paper. And then on the Traveler's Notebook paper is the same. Shadowing on one side, and that great color on the other, and then it did very well in my sketchbook too. 
I actually really enjoyed using it in this sketchbook. And that's why I say that it does, I, I would think it would do very well in adult coloring books because sketchbook paper is very similar to adult coloring book paper where it's kind of, um, you know, rougher and grittier and kind of takes that ink. So, I don't know, I just think it looks really, really great. And with the earth tones included, these would just be so great for just quick sketching for nature journaling which is how I also plan on using these and those uh, dual tip markers. And for this set, I believe it is 26, no, $25.99. And so you get such a great set for that price. It comes in this big tin and they're all really great affordable products so if you are interested you know you're not heavily investing in something that's really expensive especially if you're trying out a new type of um, art product or pro or, you know for a project that you're you're not sure about um, you just get a great value and you get a great quality it seems so far from what I've tested compared to say like the Michaels, um, what is it, that Loft, Artist Loft brand? I mean, that is on the more affordable side, but you're going to get what you pay for. It's not necessarily the best quality. Whereas this is kind of more of the medium grade where you're paying a little bit more, but you get a lot more back. So if you are looking to get something for your student, for yourself, I think this would be a great brand to check out. And they have quite a bit of range on their website too so um, a lot more you get paints watercolors sketchbooks um, there's all sorts of products on that site so i hope i covered everything that i wanted to cover um, mainly i just wanted to show you how i would personally use these products and how they apply to my life and like I said, for the price, you really can't beat the, the quality that you're getting back. So, um, yeah, for the most part, I really enjoy um, using them so far. I did carry these around for about a week um, to use at work. Um, these will probably replace my Uniball Signals once those run out for work. Um, I bring my own pens to work. That's how much of a pen snob I am. Um, I will not touch the ones at work. Um, and then these have just made me so excited to start sketching again, these markers. And I am really, really excited to just try to get back into using uh, my nature journal. And that's the reason why I bought the sketchbook, the smaller one, just to carry around so I can start sketching. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Um, and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Once again, all the information is linked down below with the 10% coupon um, if you're interested. And yeah, thanks for sticking around for this review. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was helpful if you are interested in these products and checking them out. And I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.